Hey everybody, Coach Charlie Cousins here. Hey, uh, I had a conversation with uh, some parents yesterday, and it was a great conversation. It was um, uh, great to sit down and talk to them, but uh, it kind of inspired um, something that I want to talk about that um, I guess a little bit personal to me. I, I haven't really talked about a certain event in my in, that happened to me um, maybe about 20 years ago, and it's taken me a long time to kind of bring it out to, you know, be comfortable with talking about it. But uh, I just want to tell you the experience, talk about the experience that I had yesterday. And the reasoning for me making this video and kind of sharing this story that I have is um, to hopefully inspire someone else. And, um, you know, if I can inspire just one person, it's, it's you know, pretty worth it. So uh, yesterday I had a talk with some parents um, and we talked a lot about the idea of, you know, as a parent, you are basically a mere image to your child. And what I mean by that is, is if you have a situation or a problem, the way that you deal with that is going to depict how the child deals with the problem in the future. So if you're the type of person that if you have something, you know, life smacks you in the face and you, you, you're very animated about it, you talk about it, um, you kind of throw a fit about it for lack of a better term, your child is going to do the same thing because that's what that is how they're learning to to deal with issues, right? So, um, you know, everyone deals with, with issues differently, and um, just to have the understanding, the knowledge that you know your your child is always watching, and that's how they're going to be if if you're a certain way. That's uh, it's a really big deal, and it can be it can be a great thing or it can be a bad thing depending on how you carry yourself. So we talked about that a lot. I think we talked you know for maybe about an hour yesterday. And, you know, I started to think, looking at that, looking at myself with uh, some self-thought that I had going on, why am I the way that I am? And I've never really realized this before, and it kind of just it just came to me this morning. And, you know, quite often people ask me if, if my father was involved in martial arts, because, you know, I'm very involved, this is my life, I pretty much eat, sleep, and everything else with, you know... <laughs> to help out my gym and in my martial art career and everything else. And my dad wasn't. No, no one in my family was ever involved in any type of uh, martial arts. Obviously, they did um, some sports and things, but never uh, had any kind of a heavy martial arts career. But something that my dad did for me was, was show me toughness, and he showed me uh, what work ethic is. And I want to share a little story with you that I've never really shared with the public and probably only a handful of people in my life. Um, when I was 11 years old, my dad was diagnosed with throat cancer, and um, definitely a big deal, right? He was having cancer that close to your brain is is very life threatening, um, and it could have turned out horribly, honestly. So what I remember looking back, and you know, I was at the age I was like 11, 12 years old. I can remember it very clearly, but I don't know if I completely understood it at that time because I was still young. Uh, but I look back and I remember when he first got diagnosed, he, I think maybe had two months before they started treatments or something, or a certain amount of time before they were going to start treatments. And he got his body into the most unbelievable condition that a, a human possibly could in, in two months. He made the decision that, you know, if I'm going to put my body through hell, then I'm going to make sure that I'm at, I take care of myself as much as I possibly can and make myself as strong as I can so I can get through this. So I remember he had this, he bought a brand new bike and he would ride hard. He'd go up and down the rail trail in Bay City and um, just to build up his, his stamina with his heart and his lungs. And he got a, a, a weightlifting membership to a gym at the old Hampton Mall when there used to be stuff in there. And he worked out and got himself in phenomenal shape before he started treatments. So then treatment, treatments began and... Um, you know, all throughout this process, I don't know how long it was, how long you went through treatments, maybe maybe five, six months or something like this, but uh, it felt a lot longer back then. But I remember um, a couple of situations that stick out in my mind during this time, and uh, I'll kind of back up. When he was, when he was going through his um, uh, treatments, they gave radiation at that time, and instead of just radiating one single spot, they radiated his neck from like here to here. So basically burning him on the inside and the outside, and he also went through chemo treatments. But through this radiation, it was burning him. It was burning his, the inside of his throat. So imagine like having the worst sore throat you've ever had in your life times about 400, and that's what he was feeling. So 
what he did is he took he there was these he can buy them at the store they're I think they're called chloroseptic excuse me if I'm wrong but they're bottles of spray that you can you spray in the back of your throat when you have a sore throat when you're sick and there's a numbing agent in there and it numbs your throat to give you some relief but he would buy these things by the like in bulk huge cases of them and I remember as a kid we were driving around in his work van and he would take these and dump like half of this bottle in his throat and just hold it there. And every so often he'd open the door and just spit it out. He put another, he put another, you know, gulp in. Throughout this entire time, he continued to work. He never stopped working. He never stopped taking care of his body as well. But um, what he does for a living, what he did back then as well, is he'd flip houses, which is very, very physically demanding. Um, I did a lot of that work when I was young, working with him. I do not envy him. I have no interest in that work whatsoever. Uh, it's very, very hard physical work. Um, and I'm no stranger to hard work, but uh, I don't envy anyone that does that type of stuff. But anyways, throughout the entire treatment, through radiation, through chemo, um, just cancer itself, he continued to work the entire time. He did not, he just kept moving forward, kept driving. So, you know, driving around his work van, sipping on a chloroseptic, uh, chloroseptic spray, spitting it out on the floor, continuing to work, continuing to move forward. Um, another, another thing that I remember back then is uh, he had a chemo bag that he had to, had to wear on, around his waist. And in his arm, they were shooting the chemo in. For the, most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this, but chemo is like a, a poison, basically. And what chemo does is figure out who's stronger, you or the cancer. <laughs> it is an absolute poison to your body. So I remember that one night he was just bleeding all over the place. He had some kind of blood clot that was forming in his leg, and he was bleeding all over the place. And it was really a really horrible experience. And uh, I remember we had like a nurse that would come to the house every so often, and she kind of took care of him or whatever. And I remember all these times in my head of these horrible experiences that I had. But thinking back, I was never scared. I was never worried about him ever once. And I, can't, I couldn't figure out why until maybe about a year ago. You know, why wasn't I scared? Was I just numb to the world? Was I too young and dumb to understand what was going on? But the reason I wasn't scared is because he didn't show me he was scared. Not once did he show any sign of him ever giving up or ever stopping. He never had any facial expressions or gestures or spoke of anything that ever thought or made would make me me or my brother feel like, you know, that he would um, <clears throat> ever give up. You know, so to me that is extremely inspirational. So going back to the idea of where parents, you're always a direct reflection, or your kids are always a direct reflection of you, this is a prime example. If death can be staring you in the face, and you refuse to let, to let it beat you, you refuse to show that to anyone, even in, inside you might feel that, you're not going to show it to yourself or your kids. If someone can do that, then it should be relatively easy to teach your child how to focus or teach your child the correct way to deal with a small, minute problem that you, everyone has in life. So um, I just want to share a few things with you. And you know, I'm, I'm kind of long-winded today, but uh, for me, this experience continues to drive me and continues to push me um, with everything that, that I do with my business life and my personal life. And um, just to end, I remember one other experience that we had. At the end of his treatments, there was three weeks left in his treatments, and he was on something called the clinical trials, which basically a clinical trial is like you're a, you're a test mouse, basically. They have a certain you know, amount of chemo, a certain amount of, ra of radiation that they give you, and if you die, then they know that that didn't work, and if you live, then they think, well, we'll try this again with somebody else, see if it works with them. And after so many trial and errors, they kind of figure out you know, what, what the right potion is to hopefully cure this type of cancer. And I remember three weeks before, they actually hospitalized him, and he was in, uh, um, I think he was in U of M. And I went down to see him, and this is the last time that I ever saw him in the treatments. And he weighed about 100, and f between 140 and 150 pounds. And he started out probably around 215, 220. He, he looked like about 80 years older, completely shriveled up, looked like an old man, his face was gaunt. Um... 
And looking back at that, it scares the hell out of me, right? Um, but at that time, I still don't remember being scared because he never he never showed that he was scared the entire time. And um, <clears throat> he decided that at that time he just he just cut the treatments. He, at that time, he felt like he was probably going to continue. It was probably if he continued, it was probably going to kill him. So he made the right decision, and and uh, through all of that hell, he came out and, and he survived it, and he's still here today. So. Um, very, uh, inspirational to me to have the opportunity to witness something like that. I truly believe that for every thing negative in life, there's a lot to be learned from it and, uh, you can grow from it a lot with every negative. There's a positive depending on how you look at things. And even though that was such a horrible experience for myself and, um, obviously it was for him and I, he, he probably doesn't see any, any positive of it, but I take positivity from that just because of the, just because of how I can apply that situation and how he dealt with that to life. So I could talk more guys, but I'm sure you're, you're getting sick of hearing my long story. But, uh, again, I just want to share that with you. And if that inspires you at all, and, um, if you have kids, you know, always remember that whatever they see you do, they're going to do. And just because you think that you're uh, molding them today and that's going to help them when they're a child, when they're 30 years old, they're still going to be thinking about the things that you did and how you how you dealt with certain situations. So as a parent, you are molding the planet in, in your own little way. So always keep that in mind. And uh, I think that um, everything will turn out to be okay as long as we're conscious of it. So thanks for listening to me today, guys. I uh, appreciate everyone here at my gym and, and involved with the business and um, everybody in my personal life and things. And uh, um, can't wait to see you next time. Until next time, live strong, guys. Have a good day.